I'm squinting, I'm dusty, I'm dirty, and I'm having an absolute blast. That's because I've come to the middle of Nowheresville, Johnson Valley. In fact, King of the Hammers happens out somewhere behind me. Wow, it just got quiet because of those racers. But I'm here to learn about Volkswagen's a little bit about their past to learn more about their future. And I'm doing so by driving a 1969 Volkswagen Baja Bug that did compete, does compete in off-road races. And then I'm comparing that to two brand new all-electric Volkswagen ID4s. One is a rear-wheel drive version driven by Tanner Faust and Emmy Hall down in the Nora in Mexico. The other one recently competed in the Rebel Rally driven by our friend Mercedes Lilenthal. That one is an all-wheel drive version. So rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, awesome classicness that has a swimming gearbox. Either way, we're out here to have fun and learn a bit more about Volkswagen and where they're going. First up, let's talk about this Beetle because it's awesome. This is a 1969 Volkswagen Beetle with some great modifications for desert racing. This is actually a fairly well-known Beetle as it's campaigned by Frisky Dingo Racing as 1107B and it's appeared in the Forza video game series. This thing sees maybe 75 horsepower from its little air-cooled 1600cc engine. There's a four-speed manual gearbox, a big-ass steering wheel, and 110 octane fuel sloshing around in the tank. It also has Bilstein suspension, a ton of ground clearance, and the sort of attitude that anything is possible, like mobbing over whoops and through the dust and dirt of Johnson Valley. This car is hilarious, and I love it. Now though, onto the electric ID4s. The blue one is an ID4 first edition modified to compete in the Nora 1000. It's a single motor rear wheel drive model that's been worked over by Reese Millen's race shop so Tanner Faust and Emmy Hall could attack Mexico with it. The inside has the full race works including comms, a serious cage, and great seats. The suspension is fantastic and this ID4 has a 2 inch body lift as well. Also, the wheels were downsized from 19s to 18s, so nice chunky 255-70R tires could be mounted, boasting plenty of sidewall. On the Rebel Rally ID4, we're dealing with an all-wheel drive Pro model. This means two motors and all-wheel drive. You've got underbody protection on both, and the radiators on both were moved for better approach angles. Here though, the interior is basically stock with the addition of the rear seats removed for camping purposes, a Terra trip odometer for stage rally use, and a fire suppression system installed per the rules of the Rebel Rally. I expected the rear-wheel drive ID4 to be the most fun vehicle but the all-wheel drive version has 295 horsepower versus the 201 of the rear-wheel drive version, and it puts it to far better use. In fact, the rear-wheel drive ID4 tries to cut power a bit if you get on throttle while the steering wheel is still turned, whereas the all-wheel drive version lets you power out of corners rather nicely. Meanwhile, the Beetle leans way over and hangs on while the back starts to rotate, and I laugh like a wild idiot the entire time. I really do love that thing and I came away quite impressed with the ID4s too. If you could swap the powertrain of the all-wheel drive one into the blue one with the better wheel tire package and suspension, you'd have a blast. But as they sit, both are entertaining as hell and further proof that electric adventure is a damn good time. So there you go, three different ways to enjoy off-road, the outdoors, and adventure. And I gotta tell you, the past is a ton of fun, but so is the future. <laughs>